Hey, welcome everybody to my chess stream here. It's Friday, thanks to whatever divine being you believe in. Um, it is a wonderful day. Tomorrow is my half day off. Guys, we're playing uh, Blitz and Rapid Chess here, and I'm going to be accepting challenges from everyone, especially the subscribers, firstly and foremost. Um, so anything between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3, that's our our hallmark for these streams. Trying to concentrate on playing like longer games um, rather than like really fast blitz. And we get some actual instruction and value from these games. Whereas I think like three zero, you know, five zero games are much harder to uh, to really talk about and learn from. So focusing on longer games, if you want to challenge me five three through seven plus three, it's um, it's a nice increment so we can take our time and play a play a good game. I've got challenges already. Uh, Trolling a roll mule skinner and dear Santa Claus. Guys, I want to ask you, um, like I did yesterday in my evening stream, to um, to please to please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel because um, I just need like eleven more subscribers to cross a thousand subscribers on on YouTube, and um, that's like a requirement now. It's like a new rule YouTube requires you to have at least like a thousand subscribers to be a partner or whatever so whatever they call it i think it's not partner but <clears throat> um in any case maybe it is it doesn't matter but i just need to get like 11 more subscribers a whole bunch of people subscribed last night to my youtube channel video chess training on youtube and uh, so we just need a handful more to get to uh to a thousand which is a huge milestone it's not a big deal but it's a starting point i've only had the youtube channel really really working for like the last two years or so and I haven't put that much time into it the last uh, couple of months so it would be a great milestone if we can reach a thousand subscribers before the end of the month yeah I know most of you guys who are regulars know about it and you're already subscribed but I'm just hoping to get out there to maybe a few other people um, so we can get that out of the way and I really appreciate you guys for for taking the time to do that um, again video chess training on YouTube here we have our subscribers on Twitch, and I haven't, you know, I have no actual list of the subscribers. I think Twitch is kind of secretive about that, but um, I know a lot of you guys are here. Gladys Troll, thanks for resubscribing. Um, Arsenal Fan is here. I've got challenges from Mule Skinner. He's also a subscriber. And Soul Tigo is an honorary subscriber, our faithful moderator. He's done a lot of a lot of stuff to help. Thanks. Teleto, teleto Lumbi. <clears throat> Tell it to Lumbi. Um, what I want to say. Telemundo. I had a friend who's... Yeah, he was a strong chess player. His handle on, on ICC was Telemundo. I don't know why that popped in my mind. Um, Tell it to Lumbi. Sounds like the beginning of Telemundo. Uh, Alright, so we're going to get started. I did my spiel about the YouTube channel. We should be fine. We're going to get to 1,000 subscribers. Um, I'll try to do more over there, though. Hopefully, we'll add, like, a video once a week. And I also should do, like, um, game analysis of, uh, of some of the simul games and stuff that we play here. So, hopefully, we'll add that again um, going forward. So, what's up? Rules are important. Gladys Troll just says random stuff. He's kind of, like, a provocateur. Um, troll in a roll. We're going to start with him. He is a subscriber again. Uh, guys, I'm going to have to cut out like 15 minutes early today. So we're going to end the stream at about 12.15 because I have like back to back to back um, lessons and stuff like that. So I've got to cut out on you at 12.15 today. No, no complaining if I have to leave you early. I made a note to myself to remember to stop at 12.15. All right, B3, it's Chess 960. If anybody wants to play Chess 960, I welcome, you know, one other Chess 960 game. My H pawn is hanging. Yesterday I had a new theory about how to describe the, the king side and the queen side in Chess 960. We'll do it nautical system, the port and the starboard. Captain, we have a... <laughs> we'll do like <laughs> Mr. Scott from, from uh, Star Trek. We've got a hole in the... On the port side, h2 is hanging. Um, we'll do, we could do a double fianchetto trying to get the queen in the game. I can also just play, you know, the standard knight g3, but that's not really a, not really a total fix for that 
for that problem. Um, it's a bit weird. Maybe it's better to do G3. Double Fianchetto. <clears throat> We're going to get revenge with like C4 at one point. And if he tries to do like knight g6, we'll have the proverbial h5, h4, h5 type of idea on the knight. My knight can go to f2. It's not hopeless. Um, Uh-oh, we're getting centralized. Arsenal fan played some chess 960. He's here with us now. And um, he was very classical in his treatment. I think a little more cl classical than, than troll. Um, though sometimes troll busts the classical center on me. That's the strong move. He's stopping me or discouraging me from playing c4, which is what I really wanted to do. My hypermodern first move, although I can do c4. Uh-oh, we do it anyway, then he's got bishop e5, but we can cover that. So actually, this is a strong move. I've got bishop e2. There's no winning my rook on a1 with bishop e5. A tactical oversight, perhaps, by black. Uh-oh. It's still early in the morning in Russia. I'm an idiot, don't discuss my play. We're all idiots, troll, it's just relative, you know? So some guy won the Lee Chess title tournament last night, Dr. Drunkenstein. It had just created the account yesterday. It's probably like Magnus Carlsen's like fifth account or something. No, I'm just, I'm just totally making up stuff. You can put it in like newser. Um, I, I don't know who the heck it was. So many players come out of the woodwork. It's kind of sad, but it's kind of cool too. For this small prize money. Um, okay, it's just a one minute tournament. I mean, how long does it take to play? It's probably worth it. I can't play one minute and my mouse is busted anyway. <clears throat> we dropped a we dropped a queen again. No, it was a rook against Arsenal fan yesterday. No need to send an apologetic message arsenal fan i was just kind of in a state of shock some people just don't give take backs and that's fine um but just so you guys know um i would never ask for a take back in a in a rated game um i think that it's you know it's a cool way to play uh, some people will grant take backs maybe like if it's like move five i have i have given and taken take backs in rated games but it has to be like a really early in the game and you know where the clock is in, in in really relevant and somebody obviously like played king f1 instead of castles or something like that i i will give take backs for that kind of thing um even in rated games i'm a good guy but if you have a policy of no take backs i really don't mind um i'm just kidding arsenal fan i i i have no idea who dr drunkenstein is but the way they dominated, it could be Carlson. But in one minute, it could be a lot of players, you know. The Russians will bring special players. Been away for a while. I know, Mule Skinner. Um, did you already discuss the Carlson controversy against Anarchiev? No. We have not discussed that. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm out of the loop. Um... I'm, I'm completely out of the loop. What happened with Carson, Carson and Narkiev? <clears throat> Is this something new or something like out of date? Because you're, you're prefacing it by saying, I haven't been here for a while. And then you ask about Carlson and Narkiev. No one has brought this up and I don't know about it. A lot of things I don't know. You know, the size of the universe. Um, E6. All right, we're playing Gambit. Gambit style play here. Yesterday against Troll and a Roll, I busted him by developing really fast. Now it's almost like he's trying to, it's almost like he's trying to get revenge on me here. What about bishop e4? That's a pretty cool move. I have to, I have to admit. <clears throat> but it, I don't know if it can be classified as development. We're actually just, we're transitioning our bishop from one side of the board to the other. Serbian Santa Claus, yes, that was Magnus Sledge. He followed his games. And guys, that was crazy. Yeah, we're going to ban him. He's like immune from banning. He can have unlimited accounts. Yes, Rich, in theory he should be banned. 
but I guess we have to be more flexible with Magnus. All right, it's an advertisement for the site. I didn't actually check his games. I was just joking, but I am pretty smart, you know, and watching someone with that kind of score at that, you know, looking at his score and thinking about who can it be. I mean, Magnus is obviously in the top 10 possibilities. Um, you'd have to ban the number one player because he has three accounts. Yeah, <laughs> of course. It's extremely normal. Um, all right. Let's get developed. Queen d6 troll. I don't know. That looks suspicious. No, it's not that bad, I guess. But you're moving your queen kind of early. I think troll basically just blundered, though. You know, he just overlooked that the d5 pawn is dropping because of the tactic on, on h7, so... Now I might have to like lose a tempo. Maybe I should just take the bishop on d5 and not lose a tempo. How about that? What am I talking about with tempos anyway? I mean, knight takes d5 doesn't lose a tempo actually. I could support it with maybe queen g2, though my bishop becomes a little awkward then. seems like in many cases my bishop's going to have to move anyways. So we might as well just take with the bishop. I can't believe you guys are arguing about banning Magnus or not. That's ridiculous. You got nothing to do with your time. All right, man, open a forum post about it. Bishop takes d5. We are up upon and up a minute on the clock. We've got a little problem with the h1 knight. He's coming down on my king and my king needs to bail. So I can castle kingside. And that's something I often do. I forget that you can castle with a knight on h1. There's this weird, something very weird about castling with a piece on h1 naturally. I'd rather castle kingside. We have a lot more pawn cover on that side. I briefly considered castling queenside, but it's it's an open, half open c file. He's got a half open d file. There's a lot of bad stuff that can come down on my king on the queen side. Um, a lot of informers here. I have just one account. I never remember the password to more than one. Aniket just says we're passing time. Aniket, thank you for subscribing on YouTube and the message there I saw. We just need like 10 more, 11 more subscribers. I think we're gonna make it. If I just promote the YouTube channel a little bit every stream, we pick up one or two subscribers. I hadn't really been you know, focusing on my YouTube channel too much in the last couple of months. I've been distracted with tournament and and um, doing this stream and also some other stuff. Like I had a video project. I might start a new video project for the chess world in the next couple of weeks. So again, I'm gonna be like super busy. I don't know what I'm gonna do it on. I think I'm gonna do a video on strategy, but I don't know exactly what kind of topics. So if you guys have any have any interesting ideas, um, I'm looking for an interesting topic, you know, in chess strategy to make a video, a, a short video series. Uh, for the chat chess world. All right, Troll is just going to lose on time, which is what he always does. But you're getting a little now. You're getting a little carried away now, Troll. It's only move eight. Um, I think you should start playing more sudden death blitz, which I need to do because I was having conversation with one of my one of my students, and I've been thinking about this a lot. Why have I been getting in time pressure in all my tournament games in the last two years? I vastly cut down on the amount of sudden death blitz I'm playing. And I'm playing like a lot of increment blitz since I started doing the stream, but it may be hurting my um, it may be hurting my intuitive thinking um, and just my ability to play quickly. Now this this is a kind of normal move. 
no big deal. Um, I'm just going to castle. He has queen h6, though. f4 should be considered. It does weaken my king side. And then he bounces to g4 and... Yeah. Maybe d3. Just preventing queen h6. <clears throat> He's setting up tactics with maybe like rookie eight and knight takes d3 check. We get out of there, but we don't give him queen h6, which would really strengthen his his tactics. Um, if he could play queen h6 and bishop h3, he'll be on my queen. Maybe it was silly of me to worry about it in the first place, but he could play like queen h6, d3, queen h5 in the other line and have this kind of annoying constant threat of, of bishop h3. Um, thank you, Aniket. Troll on the snail. 7 plus 5, only move 8. I allow the 7 plus 5 in chess 960 because chess 960 does require more thinking than normal chess. Normally we're doing maximally 7 plus 3, and that's the time control in effect. Yesterday I played a 3-0 game here on the stream, but I, you know, will very rarely do that. Turbo, right, like the animated cartoon movie. Now the d4 square um, is an issue. I've got to worry about that because e3 weakens my position quite a bit. Knight e4 looks rather artificial. I can wait for knight e4 and then play e3. I think that's probably the logical way to do this. Now he has queen h6 again, duh. Man, now I allowed him to do queen h6. That could get kind of awkward. He's starting to practically trap my queen. Troll, troll, troll. Bad move. You had your chance to play queen h6 there. That would have been extremely annoying. I don't know, f3 weakens my position, but my knight needs to get in the game. It's a real quandary. Um, man, I don't know. What about this knight? What am I going to do with it? Put it on g4? I mean, put it on g3? Play g4 and put it on g3? Seriously? That's really sad. <clears throat> Rather not bring his pieces out. Man, he's got the queen on this diagonal. I just realized, like, g4 is suicide. So maybe f4... As ugly as it is. He's got kind of good compensation now. All of his pieces are working. I've got backwardness along the open files. Oh man, if I take with the queen, he's got to trade queens. Unless he wants to sack a piece, which he can't really do. So we're out of the... Out of danger here. With the queens off the board, our king is safe. And that's all I can really ask for. Black still has an itty bitty bit of compensation because of this this pressure he's <clears throat> starting to generate. It's not really enough, I think, in this position, though. He's still just down a clear pawn, according to Stockfish. Interesting troll from Zoo there. Okay, clear pawn down. He just blundered with d5. I thought it was a good move, but it just sacks a pawn. Um, the engine claims you can play bishop e5 here bishop b2 what's the deal why is this okay for black again you can do f5 pawn takes pawn and queen f6 oh man that is insane you're threatening queen f6 on the b2 knight and i've got no way to protect it so i shouldn't play bishop b2 i should play knight to c3 apparently and then d4 with a very strange game. That looks like best play, according to the engine, with a very, very tiny edge for white. All right. It looks like a chess player. Yeah, yesterday I made this very dumb suggestion that chess players, please ask your girlfriends to subscribe on YouTube. One of the like top 10 stupidest things I've ever asked here on the stream. All right. 
Mule Skinner, Santa Claus, Soltigo, Arsenal fan, Romine, and, and Koopa. So, Mule Skinner is up next. We've had a lot of games with Mule Skinner. Bye, troll. I'm, I'm sorry you can't hang out with us. So, we played so many games against Mule Skinner. He's playing the French really well. What else? What did I have an idea for the French? Um, yeah, we'll try to improve our French defense, maybe. He's, he's a good player. Okay, I feel like you should be allowed to have two accounts. Um, you know, a Smurf account and a normal account. I think that's that's fair. But it's not my chess site. All right. Chess players. Significant others. Um, all right. Let's challenge him. Okay, the winner is the one thing that really, really makes life difficult for me. Bishop a5. I was suggesting that one of my students play this the other day. He said he doesn't like to exchange his knight on c3. I said, okay, here's the perfect variation for you. The bishop a5. I know that b4 is, is the main line, but I decided to try this. I was looking through the theory with, with that variation. And does this transpose to the, well, it's very similar to bishop d2 in the normal line, which is a variation I don't play. So we're here playing something that I don't normally play. Um, what is happening now? If pawn takes pawn, does anybody understand this? Because I don't. I'm sure there's something wrong with this for me. Like it's greedy, um, loses control of the center. I mean, okay, I guess the most obvious move is knight to b5. I just wasn't sure how much that actually does. It, it just kind of like loses time. I mean, if I go knight b5 and he just castles or something, what am I doing exactly? So I have no idea about the theory of this. Nezmedinov played bishop d2 in the normal winnower, like straight up, you know, after bishop. How did it go? Instead of, um, how did that go? After e5, c5, instead of a3, bishop d2. But it's a variation I don't know at all. I mean, it looks like I can try to hold onto the pawn with b4 straight up here. <clears throat> but if we play b4 straight away, there's knight g6. Then I even have queen h5. So b4, queen c7. Queen h5, even there. It's got to be b4, queen, c7. Knight f3, knight g6. And that's the million dollar question. Then bishop b5 almost seems forced. But I don't have to play b4 right away. Isn't that the, the key here? What if I just develop naturally, so to speak? Maybe there's no bot here. Well, Mubot is here in a, in a way. Okay, Bishop D3 is the square we want to go to. I'm trying to move illegally. Oh my God. I tried to make two moves in a row. I'm not going to tell the story again, you know, how I actually did that. I think twice in over the board games. 
once very, very badly. There was a second time it happened, which I always brush under the rug. Okay, queen c7. Um, yeah, I don't know why I'm thinking here. I mean, this is the entire point. So d4, knight takes d4, queen takes e5, check, queen e2. And then he wins a pawn on, on c5. Very good. Wonderful. But what else can I do? I mean, this was my entire point. Um, I can play b4, but then we're back to the other variation with knight g6. b4, knight g6, h4. b4, knight g6, h4. Knight takes e5, knight takes e5. Knight takes e5. Is that too many knight takes e5s? Yeah. Um, f4. It's pretty sharp. I mean, I'm, I'm really taking a lot of time here. All right, screw it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just taking too much time, but there's a lot to think about. That's the problem. I'm, I'm addicted to, I'm addicted to trying to figure out everything, and and it's not practical. So you just can't do that. Um, but that's, you know, different from playing an over the board game. Uh, knight g six. Wow. Okay. Queen e two. Knight f four. Duh. So I don't know about this. We can keep the pawn, but going into opposite colored bishop position gives him a lot of chances. I basically, I basically wait, wasted a whole tempo here. Whatever. Wasted a tempo. First league of the new game. Yeah, I am. I'm seriously confused. It's, it's Friday. First game of the new year. Um, first league of the new game. I never was dyslexic, but maybe it can be learned like later in life. We had a dyslexic, I had a dyslexic, um, me and my other personalities, I had a dyslexic teacher at one point, like a 10th grade science class. She used to write stuff backwards on the board. Se habla espanol. Pero muy poquito. No, we, we try to speak in English. My Spanish is weak. Um, my, my Russian is non-existent and my, my Hungarian is best. Bishop B5 check. It's probably like a waste of time to even play that, but maybe not. Okay, it's a tough call. I mean, bishop e2, I think white's better, but black's castled there, and he has some stability. In this position, we'll go into queen and rook ending, where his king's sitting in the middle of the board, if he tries to play bishop d7. It's possible he'll decide to play something like king f8 or king e7, but he went for this. Um, I've got to imagine that white has a pretty serious advantage here. He's just chilling in the middle of the board. Hmm. Well, we're very, very low on time. Actually, Mule Skinner is... <laughs> yeah, but my vocabulary, I've forgotten all my Spanish. I, I learned really well in high school, but then, unfortunately, um, I stopped studying Spanish, which was like one of the biggest mistakes of my early life. Trying to learn, trying to learn Russian no reason to do that. It would have been easier to just stick with one and learn it really well. I missed queen f3 there, which was just very, very strong. Probably just winning. But I still have a big advantage. Neil Skinner is in Spain. But he's played super fast. 
Um, I'm down to my increments. We had this similar situation last time. He's most likely playing faster games. You know, if you're used to playing like 3-0 and you try to play 5 plus 3, this is what happens. You have like two minutes more than the other guy. Um, yeah, I guess this is, this is winning. He missed it. Double attack. Everything's compact. He does have a passed pawn. I mean, I guess that's worth something. But I also have four. Four pawns versus one on the queen side now. King e8 probably his best move. Put all of his hopes in that passed pawn. It's actually pretty strong. But his king is still not safe. <clears throat> if the pawn gets to the seventh, it's it's actually pretty difficult to shake. But here on the sixth rank, um, not quite as scary. At least both my rooks are playing. I am going to lose one of those pawns. I guess I could have tried to save it with a like queen b5 check. I can get to the 7th with the pawn, but now I've got all three pieces that can attack it. Maybe I can surround it. I'm just kind of killing time here. It's very possible I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose on time. Man, this is awkward. Now he has he has a lot of play. The blockade. I may not be winning anymore. But it's still very tricky. Maybe I can play like f4, f5 and try to open up his king in some lines. This is why you shouldn't leave yourself with so little time, which I was I was really just talking about a short while ago. I had to double check queen takes f1. I was like, what? Now we're winning. Okay, this was kind of a weird move. Queen b6. Probably not best. I'm not even up any material here now. He resigned. Why did you resign? I don't even know this is winning. I think it's probably a draw. You can get back in blockade. This is a draw. You're just playing rook d8 and bringing the king back. <laughs> he reached a drawn position and resigned. Um, no, that wasn't that easy, but I was winning there at the end, and I dropped my other pawn. I have to find an accurate move here. It looks like um, c6 right away. I played what? This is actually a blunder. After that move, I'm not winning anymore. It's, it's pretty small margin for error here. I have to find a highly accurate move. c6 first. Yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Still, it's not that easy, though. So, tough game, bad luck at the end. All right, I got myself in too much time pressure. This is actually a dead draw. Um, all right, we've got lots of challenges. Um, I wanna play the subscribers first. So Santa Claus is not a subscriber, I think. Soltigo, Arsenal fan. 
Those guys are the, the subscribers. Soltigo is a moderator. Um, I'll play Arsenal fan first. Please subscribe to the channel. Take back is here, but I didn't see a, I didn't see a, a challenge from him. Um, guys, I've got to leave at twelve fifteen. I usually stream till twelve thirty CET Central European time. I'm gonna leave at twelve fifteen, so somebody will probably be left like not being able to play at the last minute. Just prepare yourselves to be the bubble. Um, I made a lot of mistakes. My first mistake was like putting myself, you know, with leaving myself with so little time. Um, I'm trying to stop doing that, but it's it's really going to take a conscious effort to just play faster and not try to understand the whole position. I basically, in the opening, I basically thought in circles for like two minutes without really even coming up with anything. It's better to just go with the flow. Get back in touch with my intuition a little bit more. Okay, now Arsenal fan allows transposition to, well, it's not a transposition. It could become a Sicilian, I guess, if C5 there. This is something else. This is a variation. I don't know what to classify this opening as. I guess it's some kind of weird English. Not so bad for black, though. Are you just making this up? I think we might have had this once on the stream. B6 is not frequently played, this particular move order. Um, having said that, I might have played... I might have played a game with G3 in the not-so-distant pass. It's a safer way for white to approach it. Um, another approach for you, though, would be after e4, c5. You might be able to play c5 transposing to a kind of Sicilian. If e5, knight g8, it's basically uh, a question of whether white is overextending himself or not. Here you play knight g8, it's not necessary. I think that knight e4 in this particular position is, is the move. I think knight e4, bishop d3, knight takes c3, d takes c3 is a, is a known lie, as far as I can remember. But having said that, maybe it's not so bad for black, this hypermodern approach. Maybe not so bad. Bishop d3 or d4. He can play like d6. At some point, I don't know. He can also play bishop to b4. He's lost a little bit of time, but the bishop on b7 is strong. F6, I don't know about that. That looks that looks suspicious to me. No Skinner turns off the stream while playing. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Too many cooks spoil the soup. When I used to watch my friend Roman Gingiashvili play uh, Blitz, it seemed like more often than not, if I made any suggestion, it would like just mess up the other guy. It's kind of the same with listening to the commentary while you're playing. Um, I think it just distracts your your concentration. I think that Mule Skinner is, is probably right on. It's, it's better if you want to, you know, effectively improve your results. Not to listen to me talking while you're trying to play the game. Um, yeah, this just looks very suspicious for black. As we shut him in with d5. Now, Arsenal fan doesn't have that much book knowledge, and he, he relies on his creativity a lot. Um, but there are going to be very bad games when you, um, you're you experimenting in a new situation and you, you miss something. I mean, I think that f6 is a departure from from classical principles. That move, you gotta say, okay, you know, you're weakening your king side and you're obstructing the knight from going to f6. Here is a tough one. Um, I think we take with the pawn because 
uh, taking the pawn is more natural. The knight on d5 is strong, but he could get a knight to c6 there. This keeps him bottled up. Very, very bad position for black. Lost, probably. Um, so Serbian also keeps his uh, stream mute when playing. All right. Guys, we've got an hour and a half worth of playing. I, I don't know if I'll be able to get to all the challenges. I have eight challenges. These are pretty long games, so. Not much to think about. I have to take here. If queen e7, queen h5 check, he has king d8. So I think I just castle and then skewer his queen to his king on the e-file. This is, this is a safer, more logical continuation. Well, I have queen e2. Queen e2 is, is kind of a classic double king pawn issue, isn't it? And then it's queen e7, d6, queen e6, bishop c4. And that's probably winning for white. If I just routinely castle, I'm slightly better, but I think he has time to develop. This way is more incisive. I really didn't look at take back suggestion. Um, now I noticed it. Queen e2 with d6 next, yeah. That's, that's the plan. I don't think there's any defense. It's like a Petrov where you left your king in the center on the open e-file. It's like an e4, e5 game where one side just didn't respect the central open file. So we have bishop takes d6, knight c4, discovered check. Bishop back to e7, knight takes, knight to d6, check king f8, knight takes b7. That might not be that simple. Or we could try for more somehow. Oh, I have knight c6 check, okay. Bishop takes d6, knight c6 check. We're taking his queen on d8. Yeah. It's over. Yeah, it wins the queen. I don't bother to calculate these things till the situation arises. <laughs> you just kind of know that something will be there. Um, Bishop c4 check, perhaps first. And then take on e7. So he's totally dead now. Okay, f6, just not not playable. I actually, I don't know if Rich was influenced by this, but two days ago on Wednesday, I had a game where I was black and I played, I played f6 very early in response to like a bishop g5. That was also a bad move. <laughs> that was like on move seven or something. Here he's playing f6 on move, on move six, even breaking my record. Um, not surprising f6 is a bad move. So it's over. Um, all right, guys. Any other subscriber challenges? Take back is next. I will take the subscribers first. Guys, check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I need just like 10 more subscribers to reach the 1,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. So I really appreciate that, guys. Um, and girls, we've got... 
Pawn takes e7, followed by knight g6 check, winning an exchange, <laughs> right? Or I get, I win a rook, or no, I win the exchange, right? Knight g6 check, h takes g, queen takes, and then rook e8 gets back a little bit of material for black. What's the final analysis? Um, would like to play for mate, but I don't see it. Yeah, only plus six at the end. So the theory here is, now I suggested c5, but strangely, there's almost no games with c5. How bad is c5? So maybe this is really bad. I, I didn't think it was that bad for black. But you're, you're basically a tempo down. I guess it is kind of bad. Knight c6, something like this. Knight b5. White is slightly better. Take the pawn there. It's too dangerous. This is pretty good. So, okay, bishop b7 is theory. It looks like more often than not people play bishop d3 here. So my move is actually an inaccuracy. Quang Liam, the Tao man, we've played several times. Anatoly Karpov. Yeah, this 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 seems to be stronger than my e5. But maybe it's a matter of style, you know. Um, Van Veli and, and Plotkin have even played e5. I, I don't know, you know, that e5 is bad. It's not as good as bishop d3 according to Stockfish. But you have to play knight e4 here. Arsenal fan, it's very important that when you have less space, you trade pieces. Um, at least one set of pieces and hopefully two. And when you play, when you don't play knight e4, um, and I know this variation is, is existing. I was going to play this. But Stockfish says black is even better here. That seems like an exaggeration. Maybe it needs a little more time to think about the position. Yeah, it's changing its mind now. I mean, white isn't worse in this position. It just sees the doubled pawns and it says, oh, white has doubled pawns. But um, it's a computer. It, it can't really think like long term. Um, it just calculates, you know. So unlike Alpha Zero, Soltigo. Um, all right, I take back and then we'll play the rest of you guys. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't like chess.com. Lee Chess is free. There's no advertisements. And people who cheat are actually, like, banned from the site. I think it's a pretty cool place. Not banned from the site, but at least their accounts are removed and, and they're discouraged from cheating. It's a better place to play chess. There's lots of tactics problems and stuff like that. There's a lot of features and it's growing all the time. Um, all right. So I'm playing chess here at, at Lee Chess exclusively. Nowhere else online. I don't know um, what to play. I've played everything. Bishop g4. Yeah, the, I don't want to talk about chess.com. <laughs> I played like a few games on that site. Couldn't stand it from the first moment. Um, what some told me, told me about Lee Chess, I was playing on Internet Chess Club. Even that old site is better than chess.com. Um, but, but Lee Chess is world's better. All right. I guess I can play E6 here, actually. I'm not sure about the most accurate move order. E6. He's put his bishop on E2. It might be more active on D3. taking a lot of time again but I'm trying to remember is there a reason why like bishop g4 is bad um yeah bishop g4 allows c4 and d5 probably I mean e6 c4 usually the bishop is on d3 in these type of positions so now he can play well I mean what is he going to do knight a3 Maybe too late for that. I guess they're both variations, though, at the end of the day. 
Um, maybe I'm supposed to play queen d8 now. Queen d8 <clears throat> makes some sense. Normally I would go queen d6. But here, queen d6 walks into knight b5, queen b8, bishop f4, knight d5. What am I talking about? Queen d6, knight b5, queen b8, g3. Knight d5, bishop c4, a6. I probably played that position even on a stream before. So I don't know which is better. I mean, just going back to d8 <clears throat> is kind of a standard position. Here again, I spent like two minutes. Okay, I'm trying to show you guys stuff. It's not, it's not just about me trying to win the game. I want to talk about the position and, and you know discuss some important points. Knight b5 on queen d6, knight b5, queen b8, g3. Knight d5, bishop c4, a6, bishop takes d5, a takes b5, bishop f4, queen a7, I think, has been played. It should be okay for black. But I just wondered, why not just do this, you know? It's basically, we've transposed to, uh, I'm not sure if this is a, the best square, but I guess it makes some sense. Um... Sure, if we transposed here, Bishop F4 is kind of tricky. He played that very quickly. It almost looks like he's trying to play D5, D6 with that move. My plan was to play B6, and on D5 I have Knight A5. But now, if B6, D5, Knight A5, D6, Knight takes C4, um, D takes E, Queen takes E7. He might have some tricks based on b3 and like rook d8. I actually don't see how that works. So, secondly, we can play just pawn takes pawn. <laughs> if d5, I can also just take with, with the pawn on d5. There's a lot of calculation you can do at an early stage in the game. Um, if you've got the time to do it, you know, and that's what I'm trying to demonstrate here. Basically, how much I'm actually calculating when I'm playing um, a 5 plus 3 game like this. Alright, so maybe Take Back didn't think about this stuff when he played bishop f4 but i have to think about it i mean otherwise d5 is a bad move because of knight a5 and um he can't keep d5 supported properly that ability to play d6 makes it interesting but i was looking at d6 knight takes c4 pawn takes queen takes he has a nasty move there, like queen, queen d3, but it's very complicated. It's like computer land. Bishop a6, b3, I might end up losing a piece in that line. So I'm still calculating d5. d5 is really just a drawing variation though. I can just take on d5 twice and play bishop b7, and I think that black is okay. d5, take everything. <clears throat> he can take with the queen or the bishop, but with the bishop is maybe more natural. I play bishop b7, he plays like rook c1, I play rook a c8, and then he plays knight e5. And I could just take on e5 there. But that's the question I have to ask myself. 
Okay, this gives his bishop retreat back to a2. Bishop b7, and now if d5, knight a5, d6, knight takes d4, it's, um, it's even better for me. Maybe not? Well, it's very similar. I don't think there's any other move for me instead of bishop e7. I guess you could play knight a5. Knight a5 is... It's an active square. Um, rook c8. He's setting up bishop b1, queen, bishop b, b a2, bishop b1, and queen h7 type of stuff here. I've never actually seen anyone play this type of line with a bishop on f4. That's that's unusual for me. Rook e8. Usually on g5 or e3, it goes to one of those two squares. Okay, I don't know what to do. So that was not what I expected. I did not expect him to play that. Whoa, what? Yeah, he's just like playing blitz. Um, I think the white has messed up his position a good deal here by playing too quickly. I'm not sure what the best is for me. Bishop c1 was a good move. I actually missed that entirely. <clears throat> so it looks like he's almost equal with the bad structure. Now it's totally equal. Should be equal. His pawns are a tiny bit more extended than mine. If ninety two bishop g five is a little bit tricky, but I think take back played too fast. We well, can maybe turn it around and say I played too slow. We get our king to d5. Do we have any winning chances here? It's probably a draw. We're a little bit better. But it might not be enough to win. I'm afraid it's it's not enough to win. Although a4 is maybe not a good move. It may, may be not enough for me to win. Yeah, I think it's okay. He can draw this with a slightly worse pawn on b4. It's still a draw. All of our pawns on the right color. Let's not hang something. 
on G6, but yeah. Too much, too much problem with the clock. I just had to trade everything. Couldn't find, couldn't find anything interesting. All right, um, this is going to be a draw most likely. Let's see. Quick analysis of the games, though. Just like a minute. Um, so the breakdown on this move where I thought forever is that the majority of players play queen d6. But queen d8 is also... Queen d8 actually has a better score for black, which is kind of weird. Um, it's hard to call. Nisipianu played this in a game. I've never seen... Um, Bishop c4 here. But I guess we transpose to a Queen's Gambit accepted or something like that. So Bishop f4 was played in eight games by Anand and then nobody else. b6. Here I expected d5. a3 is the main move according to the opening, opening explorer. And then Bishop a2 would be a normal move. But he chose the other move commonly played by masters, queen d3. I played the main line, rook c8. And now rook d1. Played in one random game in, in 2002, this position. Bishop a2 looks more, well, they're both good. Bishop a2. I was surprised by bishop a6. I mean, bishop a2 is more aggressive. You know, and here I thought you're going to take back on a6, and actually you should take back on a6. Queen takes a6, queen b7. Um, I think this is a slightly better version for you, because my knight is kind of bad on b7. But anyway, anyway, um, I was slightly better. I don't know where I messed up. I missed a tactic or something. I think I saw this and then forgot about it. I can play knight takes a3, winning a pawn. Yeah, just kind of spaced. I had um, very little time left, like 12 seconds. All right, good game. Um, I'm going to play Soltigo, our moderator, and then we'll play some of you other guys. One inaccuracy, zero mistakes, zero blunders. Is that mine or his? All right, um, we'll play e4. Soltigo is a crazy creative player. I hope he's here. Um, stop skipping classes. Yeah, I was actually really bad in, in university with chess. I, I would sometimes even go to like tournaments. Um, you've been working on d4 all night. That's why I played e4. I remember like a couple times I went to the New York Open when I was supposed to have classes. It's a pretty di you know big deal to miss like seven days of classes. I just like didn't even show up to to all my classes. There, my mouse is, is acting up again. I think I almost played D three. So guys, I'm streaming till twelve fifteen today. Um, please check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe over there. We're, we're approaching a thousand. Wow, a thousand YouTube subscribers. Um, but I will try to create more content for the YouTube channel and what else was I going to say? Oh, Sunday, I do a simul here on Lee Chess. So if you guys are free on Sunday in the evening, European time at 6.30, what's up Nefidov? Sunday, 6.30 PM here on, on Lee Chess. I'm going to be doing a two and a half hour simul. It lasts from 6.30 till... 6.30 till 9 p.m. 994 subs right now. I hope they're not all you, Aniket. But I appreciate the sentiment. Bishop e3, wow. All right, we, we just need a 1,000. I only have to have it by February. Um, okay, Bishop g4. But you guys are great. Thanks for that. I don't want to get, like, removed from, from the YouTube program. 
I'm not really making any in money from YouTube, but I'd like to, you know, keep it, keep it as an option in the future. And I like to keep YouTube to, um, to put all my videos. We've got all of our streams I'm putting over there on the YouTube channel. If you guys ever want to watch an old stream, um, you can go to my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training. They only stay on Twitch for a couple, you know, a while, like maybe two weeks or something. Um, so E5 from Soltigo. Transferring to a kind of double king pawn opening. Am I supposed to play bishop b5 here? It feels, kind of feels right. If bishop takes f3, I can simply take back with the queen. Although taking with the pawn is, is interesting as well. e5 is not really... Um, Oh, your friends subscribed. Thank you, man. That's awesome. All right. I know you guys don't have girlfriends. I'm just kidding. Bishop b5. Not enough women in chess, though. It is a big problem. Okay. Bishop b5. We've got... Normally, black is not playing this e5, okay? You're supposed to play e6. I'm kind of curious why Soltigo decided not to play that against me because we were basically analyzing that kind of line yesterday. Knight d7. Hmm. Huh. That's weird. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Knight d7 is interesting. I like to keep the tension wherever possible, but it looks like in this case it might not be that easy. I could play h3, bishop h5, g4. That overextends my king side a little bit. I'm just not sure what I'm supposed to do here. Should be something. I guess you could even go back to e2. But it seems like black would would be close to equal in that case. If he just exchanged everything. Bishop e2, take, 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 everything. Um, white would only have a really, really tiny advantage. With d5, I'm not crazy about. Maybe d5 and then back, bishop back to to e2. Maybe that's something. We can actually play d5 and then bring the bishop back to e2. There's also some crazy tactics I'm looking at. One time I saw Alexander Ivanov get some kind of crazy tactic on, on a guy. Can I play knight e7, knight takes e5 here? That's what I'm talking about. Knight e5, bishop takes d1, bishop takes d7, check. Queen takes d7, knight takes d7, bishop takes c2, knight takes f8. And we trap his bishop on c2. Doesn't this work? I think that this may be the refutation. All right, he's been working on it all morning. We can trap his bishop on c2 at the end of some line. He tries to grab that, otherwise we're winning a pawn. Um, knight takes e5. Okay, to be honest, it's not a new idea in this line. Usually they're 
trapping, you know, sacking queens on d1 in the Nimzovich variation, it's not my invention. Um, so I can't take credit for it. But the tactic is pretty rare. But there are there are various situations where it happens in this type of line. Now I'm thinking that maybe I can interpose a capture on c6. Of course, Soltigo found like the only way to kind of semi-complicate and confuse me. There is smothered mate at d6, which is really sweet. You gotta like like knight c4 when his bishop is hanging on on g4. And there's a smothered mate on d6. Knight takes f7. I'm getting crazy with the tactics. Knight takes f7. Oh. No, no, no. Is that good? But I'm going to end up like sacking a piece here or something crazy, huh? Knight takes f7, king takes f7, and I'm losing a piece? No. Yeah, that's a piece sack. I don't know if I want to go that far. All right, I'm about to lose on time. Screw it. Here we go again. Dude, what? Um, he took on d1. He couldn't resist. All right. Miniature. The miniature is... <laughs> even Stockfish is confused. Knight takes f7 was strong. I also have knight takes g4, knight takes c6. Well, it actually happened in the Dorf Mestrovich game from 1988. So it's not my invention. Ouch. No. Nah. All right, game over. What? So e5, bishop e5, knight e7, d5 best. And here you're supposed to play knight b8. It's a lot like the Chigorin, my friend. You have to go here or take on f3, which is kind of insipid. Not a good line for black. Um, yeah, at least he was 24, 2430 or something. 2430, but we'll, we'll give you 2500 just to make it. Dorfman was white. Um, all right. So now we'll play um, the rest of you guys that we can get to. We have an hour left in the stream. Um, he's... <laughs> I was joking about this last night, Jose. Um, if you ask a tactical player, you know, I'm, I'm a really good positional player, but I suck at tactics. And if you ask a positional player, I'm a great tactician and a cheapo artist, but I'm, I'm really, really bad at strategy. I'm kind of a you know, what do they call it? Journeyman, um, player with an all around style, universal style, but I have a lot of flaws. Um, okay. So D six by dear Santa Claus, this might actually be one of black's better moves here. When I guess we can, well, we can always play in English. Or we can play e4. I mean, e4 is more, more fun, I guess. Um, and now... If I were to play d4, 
that would be like a tempo down Philidor Gambit. So maybe I'm supposed to take on f5 and play d4. Well, Santa Claus is fast. I'm not sure what the status of this, this line is. With black, if I were him, I would prefer e4. But here I don't know if I should play pawn takes pawn or, you know, it seems like he has a lot of development there after pawn takes pawn. Bad structure, but tons of development. Hmm. So I don't know about, about the theory here. I have to look at this after the game. I mean, d6. D6 might be a good move. Another interesting move for black is after D3, knight C6. I have a suspicion about this maybe being secretly black's best move. Can't draw an arrow because my mouse is like busted. All right, knight E7 now. Oh, he's sacking a pawn again. We had a game where he did that. This one looks a little more sound. Um, then the last pawn sack we had on Wednesday, D5, A6 is probably not a big deal. I mean, I could play it D5, A6, Bishop D3, maybe. That's kind of weird though. Very weird. He has even E4 there. Um, pawn takes pawn. This has got to be the right move now, but he has some, some development to justify this pawn sacrifice, or whatever you want to call it. It's not really a sacrifice, because if I trade queens on d8 and he can take on c2, material will be equal. Um, just saw a game by Vladimir today, the Vladimir, as in Kramnik, he destroyed Magnus. Not recently though. Magnus has one win in all draws at, at the tournament in Wakanze. He beat Hu Yifan, who is unrecognizable. In my experience, when you lose four games um, out of five in a tournament, you pretty much start to question your, you know, you question your your self confidence pretty pretty big time. Um, Hu Yifan and Adiban are not in a good place over there. I was thinking, let's not trade queens and say we did. Guys, I have a simo on Sunday, 6.30. It's a two and a half hour slow simo we do here with like 20 players. Don't you mean win four out of five? I mean, you lose your confidence when you, you know, when you score a half point out of five. When you're, when you're minus five, uh, four, four, like who you fan at weekend say. Um, she's just unrecognizable playing without any confidence, passively, playing for draws. I'm just saying that losing a lot of games you know, has a massive effect on everyone, on anyone at any level. Okay, now F7 looks kind of tender, but he has 95. There's also knight d4. Um, 
Um, okay, bishop c4. And I've got this very nasty bishop f7 idea. He can't play knight d4 because of bishop f7 check and queen d1, pinning the knight to his king. Or maybe he can. But that looks kind of crazy. I think he'll end up losing material. Knight d4, bishop, uh, bishop f7 check, king d7, queen, queen d1. If he doesn't lose material, I mean, it still looks pretty insane. I could also go to d2, maybe better than d1. So black should just play knight e5 here. I guess. Or bishop g6, but that looks dangerous. Experimental opening by Santa Claus. All right, I'll try to get to the rest of the challenges I have, but nobody else challenged me because um, I don't think I can play more than that. Knight d5, well, I've been kind of lucky today. I feel like people are playing really, really risky stuff against me, you know, more so than usual, except for I take back, who did the opposite. He played extremely solidly, which is what I get usually. So c3, um, I just don't see how I can allow knight to d4. It's just too uncomfortable for my queen. Although black, yeah, black still has a hard time here coming up with a good move. He has knight e5. Uh, I guess I just take on e4 there. I think we're just winning. Winning a pawn, I mean, okay, it's not automatically game over. He can play like bishop e7 now. That's true. Bishop e7, castles. Black is still alive. I mean, that diagonal looks insane, though. I'm mean, put your king on g8 with a bishop on b3. It looks like I should have a tactic, but my, I'm actually not that well developed. Um, I've only got the three pieces in the game, nothing else to back it up. If I were castle, black would resign here. But I still don't see a forced win after bishop e7. I might have c4 actually. Kind of funny move. No, that would allow knight e4 again. So it's an illusion. I just don't see a win. You know, there's like, oh, there's knight f6 check. No. Queen h5 check, g6. It's just illusory. But now what does he do? You know, he can't really put his king on g8, can he? The other g8. <clears throat> Rook d1. Now this has to be winning for me. Knight g5. Luckily my rook is guarded on d1, so he doesn't have any kind of funky, you know, defenses.
Yeah, here a lot of people might revert back to an English type of setup. D4 is like a, down, a tempo down in the Dutch. That seems really dumb. That's Stockfish's suggestion. Like, dude, that is a dumb move. Okay. Um, D6 is actually the main line. I think this Knight C6 is interesting too. Um, all right. So D6, E4, E5. And now the main move is Knight C3. My move isn't very common. You should play e4. That's what I said. Looks like I don't have much. This is nothing. So this is bad. I have to play knight c3, apparently. And then we can try to do something. Then Swidler, Booyah, Chi with D4. Okay, good to keep in mind for next time. Would be no, it would be good to know what I'm doing. Um, <coughs> all right, Maestro, Rakesh, Suvik. We'll play as many of these challenges as I can get to. Um, can I get a game, sir? You haven't challenged yet. Aniket, yeah, I mean, you're never going to get to play today. You should you should challenge me in the beginning. Um, I usually can't get to all the challenges. Just make sure these challenges are are not rated. Yeah, self righteous challenged me to a rated game. Self righteous, please challenge me to casual. Um, we might have time to play that that many games. I guess we'll just transpose to some kind of Queen's Indian. I've seen a lot of double fianchetto type of stuff in the Queen's Indian lately. But I mean, E6 is the main line. Well, let's try the, this. It's very popular. But I guess Queen C2 is a good move for white. I don't really think this is that good for black. In fact, playing it before white's played g3 maybe maybe asking a little too much from black's position. I was feeling kind of frisky here. But I think that the queen c2 is strong. Soltika, why are you giving me a rated game alert? It's a rapid game alert. You got another rated challenge for me? No, I, I I eliminated the rated challenge. I caught that. It's a good thing you don't have the nuclear button at your command. The missile warning system or something. You're a little bit delayed, Soltiga. Did we reach a thousand subscribers, Aniket? That's insane, man. On YouTube, I, I might have reached a thousand subscribers. Queen d3 is an interesting move, like on the same, on the same page as Queen c2. But I think the difference is that Queen d3 is like a little bit more exposed. Um. So I don't know. I could try something crazy like d5 here, playing it like a Grunfeld. We only live once. This this looks very risky, but. Whatever. All right. Wow, we reached a thousand subscribers on YouTube. Awesome. This is not YouTube, obviously, but I was just asking everyone on Twitch to to help me because I was pretty close um, as of yesterday, and uh, I had like eleven more to go this morning. So that's awesome. Thank you guys who who did. I mean, I know most of you subscribed on the, on the YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I do upload all the streams over there from Twitch and um, occasionally I make like independent videos. Hopefully we're going to be able to do more of that in the future. Your stream suddenly stopped. 
No, I think we're good here. It must be something on your end. The next time you guys see me, I'll be I'll be quite different. I think that Maestro should take on d5, I guess. Maybe b3 is not so bad, but it doesn't seem, you know, like threatening. It feels like c takes d5, knight takes d5 is critical. B3 looks kind of slow in this relatively open position. I was looking at weird variations like C takes D, Knight takes D5, Queen B5 check, but that doesn't make any sense. Queen B5 check can never be a good move. He may be, like, trying to play bishop a3 or something. It's a cross between the kings in the end and... No. Queens in the end and Grunfeld. The 1,000 subscriber goal on YouTube is achieved. Awesome. I know it's not a big deal, but it's, it's something. And, um... YouTube was like demanding that I have at least a thousand subscribers. We have a new policy. Like why if why didn't you tell me that like six months ago I would have, you know, <laughs> done something about it, but Alright. So Knight takes D five. I'm not streaming on YouTube, I only stream on Twitch. We're just talking about like regular YouTube type of videos. The YouTube channel video chess training on YouTube but if you want to watch an old twitch stream they're all on there um, a lot of people like you know like to watch the stream afterwards or maybe you play a game against me you want to watch it later um, that's the easiest way to do it he can play for the C file but his king's still in the center here I mean that's the thing about white's position that's kind of suspicious it's opening up and his king is still on e1 you know there should be a way for black to punish that he could try to castle queen side it looks pretty maniacal to be honest with you the queen is kind of exposed on d3 um and and maybe like objectively that's why i mean this this is like this queen c2 is is a little bit safer than putting the queen on d3 it's a little bit harder to attack it there you know and you're threatening to play e4 so I think that, that that's a more reliable move than queen d3. Queen is just that much more exposed. I can hit it with knight c5, knight e5, knight b4. I'm definitely taking with the queen here. That's a mouse slip. Same mouse slip as I made yesterday. Um, I don't, you know... I don't mind if you don't want to give me a take back, Maestro, but um, but it would for the for for the sake of the integrity of the game, I'm gonna to have to get a, a take back here. I'm sorry about that, but the mouse is um, the mouse is actually uh, oh well you can go ahead and take. I'm sorry, um, make your move. Well, you have a second chance. You can you can make a different move if you want. Um, this cost me the game against Arsenal fan yesterday. That was different. I was in a winning position. He didn't want to give me a take back because he had no chance. You know, I'm just kidding, man. Um, yeah, close the Twitch stream and open it again if you uh, if you are getting some problems. Usually, now this particular mouse is um, it's been problematic for about a month now. It releases the piece in the way in the on the on the way to the destination square. Um, yesterday it happened to me. I better not play in too many tournaments here on Leech Chess till I change my mouse. But I have been in in the house all week um, working, and I have been able to get out to the store to buy a new mouse. 
so it's been it's been pretty hectic. Um, C5 is thematic, and his B2 bishop is unprotected, so he can't he can't take he can't play E4. He has to play like simple move, maybe Bishop E2, and now Knight C6, and Black should be. This is ridiculous now. Um, I have to do another take back. That was maybe a legitimate mouse slip. That wasn't the same thing. I think I just made a legit mouse slip there. I kind of picked the bishop up by accident. Now you guys know why I don't play in the in the one minute um, delete chess one minute tournament. He could play e4 now. Uh, this is the first time I played Maestro, and I'm asking him for two take backs. It's kind of embarrassing. But I mean, you guys can see that I was trying to play knight c6. I have, I have witnesses. I touched the knight first. I have to move it, you know. Um, I would be saved by the the touch move rule in a real game. You think Black is winning now? No, I don't think I'm winning. I think I just have like you know a better structure. I'll be able to play you know capture on d4, and and now maybe I'm winning. Maybe e4 is, is like a losing move. I mean, if he just loses a pawn, he's not necessarily going to lose. Actually, it's not as bad as your game, Arsenal fan, because in your game, you had a situation where I have a queenside majority. Here, if, if Maestro loses his central pawn, um, I'll have a kingside majority. And that's not as easy to use. I think he's just going to drop the pawn at d4, no? I'm going to have to be super careful with this mouse. He has 95 now? Oh, man. So I have to go to d8. And if I go to d8, then I can't stack up on the pressure. Queen d6 is e5. Queen d8. He can play rook d1. And I have a lot of interesting possibilities. But I still don't see a forced win. Queen, queen d7 allows knight e5. That's what I realized at the last minute. Queen d6, e5. I mean, still black is better, but that's not clear at all. It looks like I have to play queen d8. And then rook d1. And now I have to find something, but I'm not sure what. I guess I can take on d4 and then look for tactics with knight to b4. There is knight b4 immediately. Maybe that, that wins. Still not that simple. It's just not that simple. Knight b4 immediately followed by bishop takes e4. This way the knight e5 doesn't really work because I can, I can take on d4. I have to be really careful with my mouse. Maestro is like a 2500 player. <laughs> well, no, I mean, he just is good at making me make mouse slips. Arsenal fan is also a 2500 player. I mean, he would actually be like a 2700 player because he beat me yesterday. Um, no, I mean, I don't know how strong Maestro is. He has a new account. What is 95 doing? Queen d7 look good. 95 saves him from losing material, Aniket. I mean, it's it's really important. Structurally, I'm still better, but I I don't win a pawn. His his weak pawn on d4 would be transferred to e5, and then it's hard 
it's hard to actually win it after that. But I mean, I, I will not ask you guys for take backs if I was playing rated games. Um, and I think that's a fair, that's a fair rule. Um, I discussed this earlier today. It's a matter of, you know, it's really a matter of personal preference, but I will give take backs even in rated games. If the situation is like, it's an obvious mouse slip in the early part of the game, you know, when, when time is not relevant and, and somebody just like made king f1 instead of castles where you know, you know like 100 percent it's a mouse slip i'm generous and I, I will give people mouse slips even in rated games a lot of people just have a policy of no take backs ever and i respect that i think that's that's completely you know cool and consistent bishop should have maximum distance rooks as well But it's up to you, you know, what your personal policy is toward take backs. But I think in an unrated game, when we're trying to do this for instructive purposes, um, it's better if, if we do the take backs. In Arsenal fans' defense, it was like a hopelessly lost position <laughs> where I kind of can't blame him. All right. He, was, he said he was laughing yesterday, and that's why he couldn't respond to my request for a take back, which I kind of... I can picture that. Um, I'm going to play Rakesh next. We've got time for two or three more games. Uh, probably two rather than three. But we'll see how fast they are. I've got to leave. I've got to leave a little bit early. All right. We've got to leave a little bit early. Okay, F4 and now D5. The other day against Saul, one of our subscribers, he played... The knight c3, which is maybe white's best move there. Although, objectively, knight c3 d4 looks like the best. Rakesh system is pretty common. I don't think it's great for white, but it's not that bad to play e5. If you really, really like... You really, really, really like closed positions. Um, maybe this type of system is, is okay for you. Our knight on h6. Normally, I would play something like bishop g4 first. I'm not sure about my move order, if it's optimal or not. It might be suboptimal. He just trades on c6 right away. If h3, I'm going to do the same thing. Capture on f3. And now we can pr probably play knight d, knight to f5, knight df5. Knight f5. I'm having second thoughts. He's used like no time. Knight f5, g4, knight d4. Then this queen would have to retreat back to d1. Or possibly d3. And while my knight is on a strange journey, um, position is quite strange for both sides. I'm going to go for this. There's also the possibility I could play knight h4. That might be a bigger problem for white. Knight h4, e6, bishop e7, lock it in there, and then play h5 later on. But I don't think that it's crystal clear what's going on in this particular position. My knight on d4, well, it could get trapped. I have to watch out for that a4 trapping my knight. If I play knight d4, then again, I haven't played e6 yet, so it could drop back to e6. So I was thinking g4, knight d4, queen d3, something like that. He didn't do it, though, and now I can play h5. And I think that's an important prophylactic move for black. 
I want to lock this guy in there and make sure that he's secured and then um, then I can get about my other business I have double pawns but it's not a really particularly bad set of double pawns I don't have like a bad bishop blocked in on c8 or something like that no bad pieces and most of my pawns are on the correct color it's raining here all the time and in, in January rain it's so weird e6 and then I could play c4 that is a move maybe I could have even considered last move now it's probably too late to do c4 not absolutely if I want to do it as a pawn sacrifice I could still do it maybe I should play h4 another interesting move would be to play queen b6 maybe I should have played that To tie him down to uh, to the b2 pawn and threaten c4 discoveries but i mean it's hard to criticize a move like bishop e7 which is developing a piece and and connecting my rooks like on the back rank but now it's too late for queen b6 i do have rook b8 which is probably not a bad move Queen b6 runs into b4, which I don't really want any part of. Well, now he's sacrificing his b2 pawn. That's pretty insane. Wow. Seriously interesting move. Um... Rook takes b2. He can challenge the b-file. It's not really clear where I'm putting my king. Another idea is to put my queen on a6. But queen a5, knight b3... Queen a5, this is pretty frisky. Um, queen a5, knight b3, queen b5, and attacking d3. <clears throat> he has really interesting blockading plans here. Actually, Arsenal fan, you had a game kind of similar to this. I think I'm getting outplayed here. Sacking the b2 pawn was... Um, Sacking the b2 pawn was a really amazing move. I mean, most players would not conceive of that. I could have taken it, but it would have... I, I'm kind of opened up. My king is still on e8. I, had, I don't have the king side sorted out yet. So, putting myself in a weird situation. If I play rook takes b2, um, I win a pawn, but white can start taking over the b file. My c5 pawn is weak. Now here he has a lot of interesting options. Arsenal fan, you, you're still here. You remember the, the game I'm talking about that you played. Where I think the structure was kind of similar to this. So guys, um, I've got one more challenge. We can play self-righteous after this. At least one more game. I've got to go in about... 25 minutes. Serbian Santa Claus. Yeah. White has adequate chances here, I think. Not clear who's better.
I'm not going to say I'm, I mean, I'm definitely not better. I'm not going to say he's better because it looks like I have some resources, but not what I really wanted out of this position. I'm beginning to, you know, beginning with like bishop e7 may have been too routine. I should have played actually queen b6 c4 for white. I should have considered even sacking a pawn with c4. Now Rakesh, I think, lost his internet connection. So I played too routinely with bishop e7. It should have been maybe c4, sacking a pawn right away, getting active, and putting like activity ahead of material. Um, c4 is... is <coughs> is a good move. I'm not going to take on c4. I can play. I could take, maybe, but it's pretty bad structurally. I don't know. After c4, I'm tempted to just play something like queen b4 and trying to hold the position. Uh, it's like a nimzo, but I think that white is at least equal. I don't know what to do. He's not here. Um... I'll give him another 30 seconds to show up, but I'll give him a minute. But I think he's just disconnected. But knight b3, knight d2 was a strong move, you know. Most people are very materialistic, especially with, with lower rated players who haven't been playing for that long. Um, one of the first things we learn is is the value of material and i think that people cling to that too much you know so it's good to see someone who's like 1700 um you know he's got like five different candidate moves there three or three or four different ways to protect b2 um and he decides to just sacrifice it and i think that's that's an advanced concept that's i'm gonna let him run out of time now so we can move on to the next game but uh Looking at the game, um, Salaji Peter, he passed away. Um, Hungarian I am, back in 99, had this position once. Queen b6. Yeah, I guess queen b6 is better. I let him double my pawns. It's not really necessary. I was looking at g4 seriously. I, I didn't know what I, whether I could go to whether I should go to d4 or h4 here. Knight knight d4. I was even looking at queen d3. But apparently this this is kind of dubious for white. So he probably played better. Castles h5, c3. Maybe c3 is the wrong idea. Okay, he wants to keep me off of d4. But it's not absolutely essential, and he's putting his pawns on the wrong color. So. There I could have played c4 straight away. And that's like... I started to play too routinely here. A little bit with e6. And now I thought c4. Maybe sacrificing a pawn. Honestly. would be an interesting approach. D takes c4, queen b6 check, king h somewhere, king h2. But the pawn, it is a, it is a pawn, so I'm not sure, you know, it's really objectively correct to sacrifice a pawn here. Um, I thought this was too routine. Yeah, and like here he could have played b3, queen e2, no, okay, rook f2 or Rook f2 or b3. Most people would play b3, weakening their structure. But he just played this. I guess I was seeing too many ghosts. The engine wants to take this, but I thought that black has some compensation. I mean, white has some compensation here. But I guess objectively, I was worried I can't castle because of my h-pawn, but I could castle. 
because this bishop's hanging on on this. I should have taken the pawn. Too cautious. After queen a5, knight b3, it's kind of unclear now. He has c4. I would have played like queen b4, queen b6. It's it's equal chances, I think. <clears throat> like, like it's kind of like a nimzo. Alright guys, uh, another game against self-righteous. Grandmaster man, um, I can't play a 10-0. And uh, Aldisto just showed up. So we'll try to play self-righteous, and I'll try to get the game with Aldisto in, if I can. But I've got to go with like 12-15. Um, Aldisto's a subscriber, or maybe he's not now. Aldisto, are you a subscriber or not? I know you were for a long time. All right, here's the same line we had before. Arsenal fan, yeah. Queen a5 is almost always a bad move in the opening, right? In the Scandinavian, I mean, there's a few cases when it's not bad. I've, take, I've taken on f5 in this position before. But I like, I like e5 better, I think. And now for my next trick. Well, I mean, c4 can't be bad. How do I react to like bishop b4 check? Do I play knight d2? Not that different from my game with Arsenal fan. White has a very, very strong center. Black is kind of broken with general principles to a good extent here. Um, yeah, so if I play another game, uh, I can't get to all these challenges. I'm leaving in like 15 minutes. <laughs> Aldisto, are you still a subscriber? He didn't answer. Does anybody? He wasn't a subscriber last time, I think. All right, H4 now. We can try to. Well, I can play A3. I mean, I really ought to do this now. All right. Yeah, let's be incisive. His knight is in serious trouble. B4. b4 is nasty and he has to play like c6 there all right i'm threatening to win a piece with with b5 so he has to play c6 and now the question is h4 maybe just grabbing space across the board literally the board it's an expression but it's particularly apt here across the board um bishop g5 is a good move but it does let him trade pieces so i'm i'm holding off on that naka fan agrees about h4 Now he might have a5 trying to get some freedom and play on the queen side. But I have d5. d5. Not that simple. Am I giving him too much freedom with this? He gets a square for his knight on e6. Almost feels like I'm making a mistake. Bishop a6. I think I have tactics with b5.
Bishop g5. That's a weird move. This actually seems like a strong move. And then I open the h file or take with a knight. Self righteous is playing so fast. It's not that simple. I've got to get at him. Knight takes c7 is a little bit slow, but I have knight takes c7, rook c1. <clears throat> knight takes c7 and rook c1. I'm sure I had better somewhere along the line. Okay, I can't play rook c1 because of bishop c4. Oh my god. All right, we can do king takes f1. And we're better. But he can also play bishop c4 for that matter. I didn't really count on that. Bishop c4, knight d5. I let this get a little too weird. Oh, he just takes on g2. Oh my god. The heck? Queen d5 check? I just assumed <laughs> this wasn't possible, but... Apparently it is possible. But don't I like win the exchange or something? No time, huh? Well, that's quite a move. I'm actually like losing now. We got carried away. So I should have just taken on taken on F one. Rook c1, bishop takes h1. So I'm like lost. He's played 666 blitz games. Almost has some kind of tactics. Queen b3 check. King h1, rook takes h7 check. It just feels like there should be something for me. Knight takes a8. Maybe that's what I have to play, but it's it's really bizarre. Doesn't look healthy either. It's gonna lose on time. Okay, maybe I can play rook g1. I don't really know what else to do. He has at least a draw here.
But he's basically... He's basically up a... Oh, my queen's just trapped. Okay. I didn't even see it. Alright, good game, man. My queen's just trapped. Oh, it was raided. Oh. I understand. Okay, of course. It was raided. Why didn't you guys tell me? That was the game. How did that game get in there? Okay, now I understand. It was raided. Oh my god. I'm just totally winning. I had no idea it was a raided game, though. I would have taken it more seriously. Bishop takes f1, knight takes c7, just loses. In one move. That's crazy. Why didn't somebody warn me it was a raided game? Soltigo? Did somebody try to warn me? I had, like, checked all for raided games, like... 15 minutes ago. 39 points. Oh, man. Just a one-move blunder losing the game. After bishop takes any other move and I'm winning. But I didn't, I didn't stop to think about bishop takes g2. Just wins on the spot. There is no move here for white. Soltigo, did you try to warn me it was a rated game? I did not see it at all. Where did that game come from? Like, it wasn't there 10 minutes ago. Um, we lost to Aldis, though. I'm going to just play this 3-0 game, and then I've got to go, guys. I know this is rated. We played Marina yesterday. Um, but I only have time for, like, five or six minutes. He tried to say it 10 times. Uh, I would have been more careful. Anyway, my rapid rating is is really ridiculous. I lost to a bunch of cheaters and, and Lee Chess didn't give me the points back. I also lost some games legitimately. But um, I haven't had time to repair the rapid rating. It takes a long time to play 10 minute games. I know this is rated. But we played Marina yesterday. Um, she seemed legitimate. Legitimately 1500. But you never know. I just wanted a game that I could fit in in five minutes. C5 is an unusual move here. I've never seen that. Well, I castled before. Uh -huh. Usually I play b4 right away in that position. So she prevented b4. Pretty strong for 1500 this game. Yesterday she blundered a pawn and a Grunfeld reversed. I'm not really sure what I should do here. Something solid, I guess. But I can't, you know, I can't claim my last opponent was was cheating or something. He, he just played rather incorrectly. And um, then I blundered the one move. I mean, I'm winning the whole game except for bishop takes g2. What's un unforgiving is, is the position. Like, usually if you make a mistake, um, this is pretty well played by black actually. Usually if you make a mistake in chess, um, you know, you don't go from like a, a totally winning position to a lost position in one move. That's what happened last game. You know, usually I can make an inaccuracy and go from winning to like slightly better or winning to draw. Um, in the last game, it was just, there was no in-between. I just went from a winning position to a lost one in one move. I was sitting there thinking forever, like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Wow, Black is playing really well this game.
I guess white is better, but it's not that easy. I can try to siege this pawn on d5 and blockade on a2. Bishop a6 is a strong move, though. Found it. Wow. Not really sure what's going on here. 1500? She's playing better today. Very, very fast. Seems a little stronger than 1500. Thirteen hundred in bullet. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Um, I do have knight g five here. Knight h five. Maybe this wins. Yesterday she was kind of unlucky, dropping um. Dropping a pawn in the opening. This was a much, much better game. The opening was excellent. Black had every reason to to believe they have a good chance, but now, now it's clear. Um, nice opening, though. Black. I made an unusual move for myself. I usually play b4. This was an excellent game for 1500, though. Considering the speed at which we're playing, black has to be pretty accurate. Um, if we look at the analysis board, it's all theory until move 10. And um, what's going on here? Yeah, I castle. It's it's not such a ridiculous move, but that's not the idea. I'm, I got kind of distracted. I'm supposed to play C takes D5. It's funny that no one in a thousand games has ever played castles here. So C takes D5, E takes D5, and B4 is the normal. Or castles followed by B4 is the normal plan. But I got I got a little distracted after losing the last game, lost my focus. I castled. Strangely, that's never been played. Black should just take on C4. And the bishops... Now the bishops are good. Um, then then black, is, black is fine. So I have to do C takes D5. Um, so unfortunately, I dropped a rapid game. They're a rated rapid game. Oh, well, um, blunders happen to everybody, guys, and uh, it's not unusual. So, um, but I usually don't like to play rated games while I'm streaming. Um, I, my, my attention is kind of divided, and I'm not really playing my hardest. I'm just trying to make the stream instructive. That's why I don't do the, the rated games. Um, we'll be back on Sunday with a simul at 6.30 p.m. CET. Thanks, you guys, for helping me get to 1,000 um, 1, subscribers on YouTube channel video chess training on YouTube. And um, that's about it. So thanks for subscribing on Twitch. Please do that. And um, anyone who wants to donate via PayPal, I appreciate it. We had a couple really generous donations um, to start off 2018. So that's it, guys. I will see you on Sunday. Thanks for watching and playing and subscribing on both YouTube and here on Twitch. International Master William Pascal. I will see you guys I'm leaving a little early. Usually I stream till 12.30, but I got to go. Um, I will be back on Sunday and then the regular schedule next week. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.